a look at the August. Well, yes, thank you. Um, Welcome. The August August fourteenth uh, minutes, Cindy. I had uh, if you look down under library director updates, okay, the last. Me... Yep. The last okay. paragraph. Yes. And last it says Bob, Bob Smith questioned if. Oh no, I'm sorry. I must have made a mistake on that. Sorry, I. That's not the mistake. It, on the next page, Bob Holla's name. Oh, it's I had a, a question mark because I didn't yeah. know how to spell it. H-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A. Thank you. Sure. Are there any other corrections to the minutes? Yeah, the one one thing I had, the, I made the, uh, I raised the question about the, uh, handicap ramp and putting the railing. Well, we need a railing on the side. It wasn't at the end. The, the way it's written, it says at the end of approaching a door. That's not the location. It's it's on the side between the two columns in the front. And I I guess we were we were going to ask uh, all the trustees to, to have a chance to take a look at it and see if uh, anything should be done or not. Okay, so we're going to change the word end to side. Correct. Okay. 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 All right, I have that noted. Okay. And um, I will say that I, I believe that Ginger's husband is an architectural engineer. And um, I ran into them both at the library the other day when I was up there emptying out the um, dehumidifiers. And um, he's he's he was going to take a look at it and uh, let her know what he thought about it as well. Um, so we would have... A, a more informed decision from someone who, uh, you know, specializes in architecture. Um, but I, and I've seen it, and uh, I don't know what to say other than we have a certificate of occupancy, and I mean, uh, ever other people may have looked at it uh, and might want to weigh in on it. George, well, I looked at it and I wasn't quite um, clear uh, whether something was needed because. I, uh, the ramp, I guess, you know, is for wheelchair users and for people that needs the support of the railing to get up to that upper level. Once they're up, you know, on the actual upper level, ready to go into the library, I can't imagine that wheelchair users would still be holding up. You know, they wouldn't need it. And the people that are um, needing that railing to get them to the upper level, up the stairs, so to speak, um, I wasn't quite sure where you would put something that would assist them if indeed it were needed. Um, you know, once they get into the library, they're not railings to hold on to and things like that. So I, I but I, but again, I don't know enough about disability uh, access and I do understand we have a certificate of occupancy. So I guess legally we're in good shape, but I'm, if it seems that that's something that would be really helpful and advisable, I'd be all for it, but I, I wasn't able to decide that. Okay. And I, I would also like to hear from Deborah and Ginger, and and uh, Ginger would be reporting what her husband said before um, we made a decision. It is on the burner, Fred, and we got to return. Yeah, we got to return to the minutes because that's we swerved away. Um, anybody else got anything? Any issue with the minutes? Okay, can I just ask Cindy why you sent the July minutes? Is there something else we need to do with the July minutes? Yes, I was asked to send the corrected minutes. So I sent those, those were the corrected oh, okay. minutes. Okay, so the corrected minutes have already been voted on, so we don't need to take a vote on the July minutes again. No, I just, that was for anyone, um, a few okay. members asked to send the corrected minutes, so that's all that was. Okay, appreciate it. Um, so if there's no other uh, discussion, I'll entertain a motion to accept the August 14th minutes. Motion to accept August. 14th. Is there a sec? Is there a second? Second the motion. I second. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? All right. Bob, how do you vote? Yes. George? Yes. Fred? Yes. Fred, I don't know. Oh, Fred, you froze a minute ago. Did you vote yes? Yes. Okay. And I vote yes. Okay. So it's unanimous. Um, and then we will move on to financial report, which we're, I think, making going to be making progress on, Bob. Um, 
I think we're making progress. I'm I'm moving as fast as I can. Um, Jim has been much better. Um, he's been having. Anyway, I will work with him and make sure it's done for the next meeting. I thought okay. I was going to get it done the end of last week over this weekend, and it didn't happen. So okay, thanks, um, Cindy. I think it would be helpful um, in the in the sort of interim if uh, we have have sort of approved a flurry. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yes, you're. My, my computer is sending me a signal here. Can you still hear me okay? Yes. Uh, Cindy, I can't. Uh, can everyone hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. Yes. Bob is cutting out in and out. I know. Yeah, something is going on here. I didn't meet you this time, Bob, I promise. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, I lost my train of thought with you what were I was saying. saying. That in the intro, oh, yeah. Um, we have uh, since uh, the the fiscal year changed, we've paid for a lot of things. Could you make us a list of what we paid for and where it came from, just to remind all of the trustees, um, because we're still facing a lot of um possible projects, and we just got to make sure that we know where the monies come from. And were you supposed to also, Cindy, ask something about using a certain amount of money? I have not heard a response back yet. I emailed Dara, um, well, I emailed Pete and he forwarded it to Dara and I haven't mm -hmm. gotten a response back yet, but she's only in the office on Monday, so. Okay, Um. all right, well, because that, that would be helpful to know, but it, could you think you could um, whip up uh, you know, a document and um, do you want the Excel spreadsheet that I use to keep track of where the money goes? Because each item each, sure. um, has its own line item to show. Sure, because I just find myself like trying to remember, you know, we paid for this out of this and this out of that. And sometimes I just have trouble. Um, I should be more attentive to the minutes, I suppose. But um, if I had a sheet in front of me, that'd be very helpful. I'm a visual learner. All right, so when I get back to the library, I'll send a copy okay. of my budget sheet. All right, that would be helpful to me. Um, does anybody else want one as well? I think it would be helpful, yes. Well, okay. Send it, send it to all the trustees then, once you get okay. it. Okay, send it to all the trustees. That way we can all, right. uh, all be on the same page. It's um, on my yeah. list. All right, the other thing is, while we're on the, the topic of sending things, um, I got a... a call from Pete at Pete Kane at the town offices. Uh, I can no longer use my personal email to send the agendas and stuff like that. So if you notice that it's coming from me.waitley.org, they're making me do that and conduct all business for the library, which is why I didn't forward Bob's uh, painting thing because he said that I shouldn't use my uh, personal email the library and one other committee are the only two in town that don't have a waitley.org email account. Um, so he was supposed to, uh, four days ago, send me how to do it, because it's very simple for me to, to, to arrange it, but it, that hasn't happened yet. So if you see some strange, you know, something at waitley.org, it's me. Okay, just wanted to let you know. So what about the rest of the board? Did he say anything about the rest of the board or just as chair? As chair, when I when I when I am conducting the business of the library, uh, sending out the agenda um, and other points of discussion, like we let's say we got a, a, a bid from someone and I wanted to send that out. It should go. You can you can all send it to me from your personal things and then I would send it to the board from the Waitley.org address. Okay. So are you gonna are you gonna have two email addresses then? Uh, no, I'm gonna for trustee. I'm gonna use the whatever Waitley.org thing they set up for me. So does that mean when I do the this month's meeting minutes, I would send it to that email address, and then from there you would well, forward it's, it's it? Well, it's not 
it's not set up yet. So send it to me at my regular one because I mean we can't wait forever All for right. for him. I I'll go if I have a chance because I'm very busy during the day. If I have a chance, I'll get to there tomorrow and ask him why I haven't gotten it yet. Uh, and um, I don't know, maybe he'll be listening to this later and remember that he forgot to do that. But then um, once you have it, then I would just do the trustee yep. meeting minutes, send it to that email and you would forward it from there. No, you can because you're you're doing it officially from CW Mars, aren't you? Well, I switched to officially doing it from the library.waitly. Then you're as long as you're doing it from waitly.org, you're all good. Okay. Or or some official thing. That's fine. But um okay. and he urges us not to discuss business uh in emails. It's open meeting law. And we're, I think we're I think we're very good about that. If I send you something, I just say for your information, we'll discuss it at the meeting. Um, we really can't conduct business that way. And I know you all understand that, but he's reiterating that. And I don't know, I don't know how I mean, I've been chair for a while and and um before that it was um uh Quint and Quint used his own, but now and I guess things, that, things, are, things are different. Bob Duda. Yeah. All right, okay. Well, so thank, thank you for clarifying about the meeting, man. Okay. All right. Director's report. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that I accidentally sent the August meeting minutes twice, and thank you to George for pointing out my oops. Um, a few things that have come up since I sent out my report. Speaking of the ramp, one of the handrails has rotted at one of the um, brackets and it sort of has split in two. Um, you can still use it, but it's going to, the rail is going to need to be replaced. It's the long rail, if you're going up the ramp, it's the long rail on the side facing the children's room. And so it basically broke into two pieces. Do you think was was that an act of vandalism or was that no um, i think it's just rot. it looks like just rot from all the be it's been two three years since it was replaced okay so this is the first time in a long time we've actually had to replace it and it's not from vandalism it's from actual rot okay because the last one was from vandalism as i remember yeah no this is just from okay new england weather okay and then um, the accessibility video that I did with MLS it was released yesterday and we're, there's like a short, maybe 10 second blurb with me talking. And then there's just a video showing the bathrooms and the ramp and the lift and me doing a little bit of work, but it came out really good. It's can on, you send it? can you I will send, send it, but it's also on our Facebook page, MLS's okay. Facebook page. And I think if you really, really want to, you could find it on YouTube. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, and then Dara did not say who, um, but she sent me, because she does have to inform me, she sent me an email this morning saying that she's received a request for our library financial reports. And because it's a public records request, she has to honor and send whomever it is copies of our financial reports. What which what financial reports? Our library financial wonder, report and our special revenue reports. I wonder if that was Jim. I don't know. I just have to be informed that there's a records request. I think it was Jim which I was. trying to hook up with me. And so, now it's no longer a trustee. It has to be treated as a records request. Yeah, from the public. Request. So what 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 will you provide him, Cindy? Oh no, Dara's providing it to him. She just oh, had okay. to inform me that there was a records oh. request. Oh, okay. All right, that makes sense. I, I bet all it right. was Jim. If it was okay. if it was all the accounts, including the special accounts, that's what yeah. held him up because he was okay. he and I talked about two weeks ago and he was feeling much better and he was gonna talk to Dara and get the updates and we were going to work the end of last week over the weekend and get everything on the financials put together for tonight and he never heard back from Dara and I mean okay. we're we're good financially we're right on track 
with where we it, where yeah. we should be. And there's nothing nothing that we ever spend that's not voted on by the board. So we got nothing right. to hide. So, and yeah. then um I received the invoice from the fire of equipment incorporated when they from when they came to switch our line over to wireless. So after using the um electrical slash safety upgrades funds that we still had available, um that invoice was for seven hundred dollars. So we'll still have $342.50 left in our electrical and safety upgrades funds, which are the okay. ARPA funds. So there's some left there if we still wanted to pursue the wireless pull stations. Okay. And then the only other thing I have I can wait because um, Bob was gonna have a conversation of, or during his update. Um, and I can just mention what that during Bob's update about the data rep. Okay. Oh, and I do have two funding requests. So oh, next yeah. Wednesday night, we have Meg Thatcher coming from the astronomy department at Smith College to do um, autumn nights, what's in the sky this month. And I would like to pay her an honorarium of $150 for coming and doing a presentation for us. And I just need the board to say yes, that's okay, or no, we but we'll pay this much. So and we can take it out of general donations because we still have about three thousand dollars in general donations. So that could be our funding source. Any discussion? Is that gonna be advertised? It's already been advertised. It was in the scoop, it's on Facebook, it was in the MailChimp. There's a flyer at the library. There's a flyer in the kiosk at the library. Deb shared it on her personal Facebook page. Deborah, sorry, Deborah. And Deborah also shared it on the Valley Neighbors um, Facebook page. So it's being, it's also on our website. So it's out there. Mm -hmm. And you said there was a lot of interest? There's been a lot of interest, yes. I... I can't go because it's the only Wednesday cross country meet I have all year. And it's at and, Hampshire College. I just And fortunately that was the only night in September she was available that Meg was available. Okay. Well, but, it should it should be should be pretty cool. And you said you had yeah. three, three three telescopes available. We have three That's telescopes all together. Yes. That's great. That's great. Very good. Okay, anything else? We need to vote. Oh yeah, we got to vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, we get, someone. Someone needs to move that we spend the one fifty. Well, I have a quick question. Is is the one fifty in line with what similar other speaker Spoiler. events receive? Yes. Yes, that is the going rate right now for. Okay. Having presenters come to libraries. Then, then I make a motion that we vote on paying um, next Wednesday's speaker one hundred and fifty dollar honorary. Is there a second? I second the motion. Is there any discussion? If not, we'll proceed to a vote. Bob. Yes. George. Yes. Fred. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay, you got it, Cindy. Okay, okay, thank you so much. And then the other one is um, we're having Janet Ryan come back starting Monday to do music and movement again in the children's room. And the um, the cultural, Waitley Cultural Council is paying for some through a grant. And then CFCE has a grant to cover some. And so they were hoping that the library would be able to cover four sessions, which would be the sessions in December at $100 a session for a total of $400. And there are funds available, either we could use general donations, we could use state aid, we could use the Friends Restricted Fund um, to cover that. What is your pleasure? George? I think that's a good idea. That's one of our biggest draws other than TJ and the Peepers. And we want to do whatever we can to continue that program. Because it mm -hmm. really has helped our circulation and our library visit statistics. Great. Okay, is there any other discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion to um, 
spend the $400 and maybe you can attach to your motion where you want to get it from. I put forward a motion that we spend $400. Um, that was for TJ and the peepers out of uh, donations. No, for, for, um... for Janet Ryan. Janet Ryan, I'm sorry. Janet Ryan, not TJ and the peepers. General, out of general donations. Okay, is there a second? Right. I second the motion. Is there any discussion? If not, we'll go to a vote. Bob? Yes. George? Yes. Fred? Yes. And I vote yes. Cindy, you got you got your money there. Thank you okay. so much, everybody. And then the only other thing I have can wait till Bob starts um, updating us on the Duda community room. Okay. All right. Um, strategic plan, uh, Cindy, George, anybody? Well, I oh go ahead, George, because I well, forwarded it to you and Deborah. Yes. Uh, Cindy forwarded us a second draft of the strategic plan. Uh, Deborah and I have been working on it. Uh, Deborah's away right now, but we hope to uh, give a, another draft uh, for Cindy's review early next week. Uh, and we will uh, plan, it's our hope and plan to circulate it to the trustees 10 days, at least 10 days before the next meeting. The, that would be the October meeting. Okay. It sounds good. Any questions or issues? Okay, uh, due to room floor repair. Okay, they are coming in next week to bring the old, to tear the old floor up, put down the coating for waterproofing and put mm -hmm. the new floor down. Um, the books, it, it, so this is a multifaceted and Bob, you tell me how you want me to handle this. Uh, the books as you walk in on your left in the room have all been moved upstairs. Everything under the mini split on your right as you walk in has is still there. And I would like to talk at some point during this meeting about what's on those bookshelves and how we want to handle them in the short, medium term. Um, Cindy and I talked today because next Wednesday's um, Evening Sky event is going to directly conflict with this. Does anybody on any trustees have a a projector screen that the library could borrow? Okay, um, then I will take care of that because um, we're still trying hard to have it at the library. That will make it easier for everybody to keep it at the library. We can move the chairs upstairs if hopefully they're done. Um, and if we can walk on the floor, we can have it in the basement. Uh, I also checked in with them. They're getting back to me on what types of chemicals they're going to use. So we begin to have an idea of what types of VOCs we might be dealing with. They thought it was low VOC, but I'm still waiting to hear back. Also waiting to hear back on um, uh, exactly when they're going to start on Monday and are we going to be able to walk on the floor immediately when they're done or do we need to give it a day or two? Uh, so that is that is the floor update. Okay. So sort of piggybacking off of that, um, the yearbooks go back to 2000 was the last time we got a Frontier year yearbook. And the newspaper articles go, but um, the last time those were done as well was 1995. So the last time any of that was done was when Nancy Marchewska was the librarian. So after Nancy left, it doesn't look like anyone picked up doing contacting Frontier about getting yearbooks. And the newspaper articles are just clippings about things that have happened in Waitley. And those, those by the way, I find absolutely fascinating. I have gone through them many, many times. Don't let anything happen to those. They are okay. just treasures. I even found my birth announcement. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know they was... went back to the 19th century, Bob. Those well, no, it's, yeah, not quite, but um, <laughs> close. Um, yeah, okay. So we um, can just leave them where they are. Well, I'm not sure what they need to do around that bookshelf. So is everybody okay if I box everything up and get it 
either someplace else on that floor, the basement, and then organize all inventory everything. Um, there's a couple of history books that I think should go with the other um, history. Uh, hold on, my phone just burped on me here. The there's some some board games, Pictionary, background, backgammon, Scrabble, stuff like that. Um, but there's you don't all... need to keep any of that stuff. That stuff was bought in back when it was being used as the Muse Cafe for anyone who wanted to play a game. Oh, okay. Um, if anything, we can if they're all together, all the pieces and everything are together, then we can just create add them to our library of things and say we now have Scrabble, sure, a Scrabble board game. Sure. Well, there's so I'll talk to you about that, Cindy. There's weekly annual reports that go back to 1870. I think we need to keep those. Those are bound, um, and then as as they come forward, they're not, but we still have them. Um, there's the yearbooks. There's some other history books. Um, if it's okay with everybody, I will um, inventory everything, uh, make sure it is all – we know what is there. Because this goes to, and again, I, I don't know if this is a good spot for it. I made sure, a few yep. calls about some of the other books that were down there, the history and the genealogy books. And the genealogy book, I reached out to the Sunderland Library because they're having, what's her name? Uh, Hillary Shaw. Um, and they're doing a sort of a genealogy class. And they're already overbooked um everybody was super happy i talked to the person at the library and he said oh yeah we have similar kinds of things and i said some of the books we have are in polish i don't know if anybody's looked at them but some of the some of the history and the genealogy books that that we have are in written in polish so it's really pretty interesting i asked him if they had any thoughts if they've taken any of the genealogy books and digitized them. And he said, they don't have a lot of use for them, so they haven't. And I said, well, how do people know that we have these? If they're just the books and they're not in circulation. And he said, well, that's a good point. So there's a little, I think there's a little bit of a chicken and the egg, chicken or the egg kind of deal here. I'm going to reach out to um if it's okay with everybody i will reach out to um it's a genealogy group it used to be new england genealogy it's now american ancestors um and they came very highly recommended by the archivist at the new northeast document conservation center they said if if you have any questions about what you have you should reach out to to them um, I did get a name from the, the contact at the Sunderland Library of a book binder in Deerfield that they have used when they've had older books like what we have that are beginning to have issues. Uh, and he has rebound them. And he said he was very reasonable in price. Okay. Uh, have you talked to anybody at the Historic Society? Because everything you mentioned, to my knowledge, is also available at the Historic Society. I've seen it. I've even okay. contributed some of the books to the Historic Society. Uh, and maybe the question is, does the library need to keep a copy of it as well? Why are we? Why is the library keeping the same thing as the Historic Society? Because well, we, are, we are the public library. We are the well, public library, so... Us holding on to some of these, I Fred, I don't know the answer. That I was kind of put in my place by a couple of people I talked to. They said, well, what exactly do you have? And I went, um, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. So 
my problem is right now I have, I barely have the time to give to the library that I'm giving. I don't have time to take on a project that inventories all the genealogy books and the families and the histories. And I, I can get the basement emptied. I can get that last bookshelf inventory because it's going to be pretty quick because there's there's large clumps that it falls into annual reports, uh, scrapbooks, um, you know, yearbooks, stuff like that, some history books. Um, this is going to be a decent sized project for somebody, and it's going to involve a, a lot of time sitting on the phone trying to figure out exactly what we have on the phone or on the computer, figuring out what we have and what's the best thing for us to do. Yeah, and the, the genealogy books, uh, I know the Historic Society is as an effort underway to update the genealogy books since uh, I think uh, 1971 was the last one they came out. There's an effort underway to put all that online. They've asked anybody that has updates to it to submit information. I don't know exactly where that stands as, as far as putting it online, but there's an effort there that uh, who's a Derek Smith, I think, is kind of in charge of that. Sure. Maybe it would be a good idea at some point after sure. the stuff is all boxed up and then put back on in the shelves and available sure. to have somebody like Derek or Neil come over from the Historical Society and just take an informal look at it and say how much of it um, overlaps with what they have, what they might suggest we do with it. I mean, I'm all in favor of keeping, even if it's dual copies, at the library so that eventually if we can get it cataloged and organized, people may come in and say, I want to find out about my great grandmother who came from Poland in 1902. Um, what? Oh, sorry, It sounds like for the moment, Bob, um, getting it boxed up and out of the way for the floor is the is the main thing. And if you need help on Wednesday, I, 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 I'm around and I live down the road, so I'd be glad to help. Everything, nothing has been boxed up. All the books on your left as you came in, which is a, a lot, the majority of the genealogy and history books and all of the Anna S. Dickinson um, collection, all those have been moved upstairs into the adult stack room. They are not boxed up. And part of that was, I'm a little concerned about putting some of these older books in boxes um, with the higher, with the humidity that we have and not knowing, even though it's temporary, not knowing what the storage is for the books. Some of these younger annual reports and the yearbooks and the scrapbooks. I think if we just do it temporarily, get them boxed up, get them out of there for next week, they can come in, they can do the work, and then we can even take them back out and put them on the same shelves. And then people can look at them. We can figure out what we want to do with them. Um, yeah, I think I'm in pretty good shape with getting all that done. So what what books when you say genealogy books, what books specifically are you talking about? The books, the first set of books that got moved up. Um hold on, let me the one with like the, the history of the Nathaniel Dickinson family and the books yes. by Crafts and the books by Ina. Well, there's field ge there's two field genealogy books, volume one, volume two. Um, I'm looking at the Graves family book. I have the Morgan family, Tucker genealogy, history of is it Wiles or Wells fa Wells family, Crafts um, family, Nathaniel Dickinson. And then there's volumes of that just say genealogy in Massachusetts. And I don't I don't know what I mean, obviously the families are easier to figure out. Um 
so I, those are all, those all got moved up pretty early on. Um, and then it's just a bunch of history, history of Waitley, 1661 to 1899. There's a bunch of copies of that one. Sunderland, history of Sun. So I, Well, they, they are moved, they are moved and they are safe now. Yes. Okay. And, and the last thing to move would be the bookshelf on the right before you go up the little steps to the kitchen. Correct. Um, so once that gets done and the floor gets done and we determine whether or not we've solved some of the humidity issues, no, I mean, I think with two hum dehumidifiers going, it seems as though there's a lot less water each day when I go up there to empty them. I don't know. It's because maybe you do it earlier than I do it in the day. Um, but even Cindy said the other day after I dumped them out the day before that there really wasn't anywhere near as much water in them as it's, there was earlier. It's also been dry the last three, three that's and a half weeks. Very true. Yeah, that's what well, you had to say that, right? Well, I was hoping, but, I was hoping it, we were turning a corner. Well, you know, we don't know. Right. We, I, if, if I, if I understand where you're going, um, we're going to want to get the floor sealed and see what that room looks like. Right. And then we can make a determination. And but, if books and, live someplace yeah. else for another three, four weeks till next month's meeting, it's not ideal, but we'll have three weeks of data. Right. And Cindy, you you did some research and you, you found that in general, uh, the recommendation is humidity somewhere around fifty percent, and we yes. were only up, we were only up to fifty two. Um, I I have been doing there. research on this, and there is we do not have a humidity issue downstairs. This is one particular person, not just one particular person making a mountain out of a non-existent molehill. According to the American Library Association, the Smithsonian Institute of Archives, and the Society of American Archivists, the recommended standard for paper-based collections is between 30 to 60% relative humidity, which is what the room has continually been at. The mini splits are just fine. Dave Fowler came in and did his, his semi-annual maintenance, and he said they're working properly, they're acting as dehumidifiers like they're supposed to. The dehumidifiers, I had Matt remove them yesterday from that room in preparation for next week. When it, we have been keeping track of the humidity levels upstairs and downstairs. When I last, before I left today and I last checked, the humidity level downstairs was 49% and the humidity level upstairs was 54%. The other the other part of this, and I just realized that uh, a couple of weeks ago is not only the humidity, but what is the minimum or optimum temperatures for the library? I've been in there in a, off and on the last two weeks. The first floor room is 68 degrees and the basement is 70 degrees. It, it's, I don't know if anybody keeps their house at that temperature. It, what, what is the minimum or optimum for, for a library? We don't keep it at that temperature for the town hall or any town offices. Uh, Cindy, did you get an optimum temperature when you were looking at humidity? Well, the optimum temperature, the lowest they recommend you have your room set at is 35 degrees to 65 degrees. The thermos, the heat. Downstairs, the reason it said it's 60 in the community room was to try to help offset all of this discussion regarding humidity because if it's 68 percent it's a little bit cooler so maybe it's not going to be because it's not as warm well, I, upstairs I, I, they're set at 72 degrees except for in my office carol always wears a sweater that's just how she is but i think you know to me that that's too low temperature 68 and, well, and what 70. do you what, uh, Fred, what do you recommend? Then perhaps maybe the board needs to make this a discussion and the board vote and say going forward, this is what the temperatures need to be set at and I will set them at those temperatures. Well, I, I don't know, 
uh, I guess the first question I have is what is the optimum or recommended temperatures that all these uh, libraries and organizations you talk to say what should be the optimum? Because uh, if we don't need it at 68 and 70, we're, we're, we're wasting energy. Our, our electric bills keep going up and, and we're making, we have concerns about the, the cost of energy in that building. I just why, received, why do so much when it's not needed? I just received this month's light bill and it was $380. And part of the reason the light bills oh. are probably high is because we've been running humidifiers that we haven't had to run. Okay, but still, I was just looking online, and and uh, recommended temperature for libraries is seventy oh, degrees Fahrenheit or lower, uh, uh, and number of sites suggest that it can be between sixty four and seventy two degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what the mini splits are set at, except for the one in my office. Uh, I I just think that's too low a temperature. And what are what are then what are they in the winter time? What's it what are they set at in the winter? In the winter time we usually have we usually keep them the same temperature all year long. We just switch from heating to cooling or cooling to heating. Wow. The temp the therm the thermostat is set to be at 68 degrees when we're open, and I'm not sure what it was set at when we're closed. But the thermostat has already been, the new thermostat has already been programmed to run at 68 degrees during open hours, and I believe 58 degrees when we're closed, and then it will, should only kick on when the mini splits are not heating the room enough. Okay, um, we were actually talking about the due to room floor, and then we once again went way out into the weeds. Um, let us continue. Is there anything else about the floor and in preparation for next week that we should do, Bob? No. Thank you for uh, doing all that stuff. I appreciate it. Happy, and happy that, to the, do it. There's, um, when do you want to talk about the painting? Now? Um, uh, well, um, update on painting project. We can wrap it. It's the next item of business. So. Okay. We can, I, we can I emailed right everybody I emailed everybody in attendance the estimate um sorry had I known I would have forwarded it out to everybody I thought it was better policy to send it to Bob Smith and have him send it um in a nutshell uh a recommended Bob Holla is not I think he's busy and he wasn't um I guess the best way to say it is he wasn't uh, interested in doing it. Yeah. Um, so just to read through this real quick, the exterior, uh, get everything prepped. Uh, he will, so the painter, J.D. Ross, will allow him to use his um, outdoor scissor lift for free. J.D. will donate the time of the scissor lift for, to the library. Uh, while he has a scissor lift, it's a perfect time to take that existing cable wire down off the adult stack room and back around up onto the ceiling. So he's the painter is going to do that for us. Uh, he's going to wash the woodwork as needed, repair damage trim sections as needed, um, prep it to be painted, and then paint everything. Uh, he including will also, the columns. Including right. the columns. The exterior woodwork, including the columns, the overhang ceiling, um, the white siding in the front, all the soffits, freeze boards, front door. Um, he will yes. also yes. Put the interior side of the front door to match um, and then paint the three metal handrails black. He'll sand those down and paint them because we're getting a little rust on that one. Um, that estimate was four thousand dollars. So, which I, I mean, you know, I I spoke with you yesterday, but the more I thought about it, uh, four grand for all of that. Plus, he's going to paint the letters, the S. White Dickinson Memorial he's Library. Paint the letters black. Paint the letters black. 
Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think that's a pretty good deal. I, I think it's, I think $4,000 is a lot of money, but I think we're getting a lot of work out of the $4,000. Um, yeah. Bob, I, I lost track of everything you said they were going to do. Does that include the, the back door out of that storage room on the basement door, basement? No, that's already been painted. Oh, it is? Yeah, either Larry or Fred got that for us. I Oh, I don't that, remember if it was painted or not. I looked at it the other day a while ago. I don't remember. Take take another look at it. I think the basement exterior door is in pretty good shape. Yeah, okay. Um the next the next estimate is interior and on the exterior he can start the beginning of October. That's great. Right. And the interior um, he has prepped the work site, uh, repair the damaged drywall and the ceiling where we had the leak come down through, uh, paint the entire ceiling. His comment is, I'll never get it to match. He said, if I don't paint the whole ceiling, you're going to see the repair. Um, he will sand and paint all the baseboards, um, patch the walls, paint the entire Duda room from corner to corner. So we ended up doing, as you walk in on the right, there's the, the lift. They, they did the best they could and they matched it with sort of a creamy yellow. If, it, if anybody goes down there, take a look at it. Uh, if you have any ob objections to repainting that room, um, assuming we vote to do this, if you have any objections to repainting that room, the color that is around the lift in the Duda room. If you have an objection, let me know. Um, otherwise, if we agree to this, he's gonna match that color and he's gonna paint everything that goes around on the walls, that color. Um, and the baseboards, white, that's 2,900. So baseboards, walls and ceiling, for 29 and repairs for 2,900. Again, it's a lot of money, but I think we're getting a lot of work for the money. If he uses some of the leftover paint that we have, would the cost end up being less because he used some of the materials we already had? I think it, I think it could be less. Um, if we're going to ask him to stand by his work, I'm going to leave it up to him whether he uses materials paint or not. Well, right. I do remember that it's that it was Sherman Williams paint. Okay. Well, I'll make sure. Again, assuming we okay this, I'll make sure to let him know that we have a candidate, and then at least he can match that color better. And he's not yeah. just going off of the color cards. Yeah. Um, lastly, his comment was, "While I'm down here, if you go for all of that." Um, the window sills in the Duda room, and then the heater face plates, um, and then the exit door in the basement. This was this what you were talking about, Fred? The interior exit into the into the um, storage room or the exterior door? No, the, the exterior. Okay. Well, he took a look and he said, "Once I'm done with everything else, if I don't do these last couple of things, it it's not going to look." as good as it could. And he's added those and said, and so this is sort of a la carte. We can take what we want. Um, he said it would be another $300 to do the window sills, the heater faces, and that door. Okay, that's good. I was gonna ask you about the, the heater cores there, whatever here. Yeah, um, Cindy pointed out to me today that they need okay. to be um, I'm happy to loan him one of my shop vacs. I have one with a very small point. Um, Cindy and I were messing around with how you get those little doors open. Um, I'm happy to ask him, you know, for an extra whatever, half an hour's worth of his time, can he clean those out with a shop vac um, just to get those, the inside of the heater faces cleaned out a little better. 
some are okay, but some really do need to be clean. Now, is is any of the any of the paint there now lead paint? He did not think so. Did he test he it? I, pardon? Did he make a test? A test of he, lead paint? He did not test it. He looked at it. Um, his comment was the he's. He had an indication on how lead paint would peel. And he said, I'm not seeing that from the paint that you have on this here now. So I was going off of his judgment. I think the Deuteron is has been painted in, in the last 15 or so years. Yes. I, the whole right. all of the library walls have. Yeah, wouldn't the have been. problem is not the, the outside layer of paint. It's what's underneath that outside layer. And any of that can, can peel and flake off and whatever. Well, but it's it's not. I asked him I asked him what he would do differently um, if it was lead paint. Um, and his basic comment was not much. He's not planning on disturbing. He's not planning on going into the walls and necessarily um, there is some plate, some paint that will come off. Yes, but he was going to patch over. He was going to oh, he was going to go through and remove whatever is loose and then patch over that quick sand and then prime and paint. His, his comment was it it's the least disturbance possible. And what is he doing to contain the dust or sanding? Uh, we did not talk about that. I was, I don't know how much, because it's only really that one spot that he's going to be sanding any, you know, joint compound sort of sheetrock filler. Yeah. We can always shut the doors to keep it under control inside the room. And the room is empty of books. But, it's, right but you get dust all over it. If you need a, a vacuum there somehow running while he's doing that to contain it. I can talk to him about it and and make sure make sure that's what he does to minimize the amount of dust. Right. Okay. okay. So, I think that would be helpful to know that, or, or ask him what what he's doing for it. Okay. Um. Well, do you want to do you want to take a vote? Um. While you get that information, Bob, do, would you like to take a vote on the out outdoor stuff since he can start in October? I'd like to if if everybody is thinking along the lines that this would be a good thing to move forward with, I'd like to get him moving on the outside. Yes. Okay, Cindy, tell me where we can get four thousand dollars. Um, we have a Dickinson expendable account that we could probably take it out of. I'm not sure where we're at with state aid. Um, I'd have to check my report when I'm back in the library. Um, so I know there's the, so I guess it would either be state aid or the Dickinson expendable account. That's for maintenance. Okay. Um. Well, folks, what do you think? Well, I think we, if we, is there enough money in either of those two accounts to do this? Yes. I'm yes. not sure what we have left in state aid until I check my um, report when I get back to the library. But I know we have over $4,000 in the Dickinson expendable fund, which is designated for maintenance. Well, that seems like a might be the right place to take it from then. Okay, just remember that that's not a um, it doesn't regenerate. Yes, that that's the interest from. Oh, so it does to some degree regenerate. Yes, we were. Okay. That's 
the expendable part is the interest, but the uh, the actual balance is unexpendable. Is that is that the S. Y. Dickinson? Yes. So that's the uh, initial seventy five thousand dollar fund. There's actually two of them. On. There's that one, and then there's another smaller one, and it was the smaller one that I was talking about that has would have enough to cover it and that's the interest stuff it's s white dickinson aged which is for maintenance as well it, but it's always had a smaller um okay. investment amount okay. but we've got plenty to cover there well there's a way we, we could we could we're going to be able to come up with four thousand dollars so we could vote to to move forward with the out exterior painting project tonight and then Cindy and I and Bob and whoever else wants to, we could figure out what's our best option for paying for it. And then- Or here's a, a possible solution. Invoice it separately. One invoice for the outside painting and that could come from one funding source. Invoice separately for the duty room painting and that can come from another. So we're splitting the payment sources. Uh, that's a possibility. Yes, but what we want to do, I think is- we we need to hold until we can find out we can uh, answer Fred's questions regarding the dust. So okay, so it least, would end up being two we, separate invoices. Correct. So at least okay. We can, yeah, and that's why he presented it in a in a menu cafeteria menu that we could select um, from. Bob asked him to put it separate so it's not just this one big thing, all or nothing. Um, I, I I think that we should move forward with the four thousand dollar exterior painting. I don't think you're gonna get a better deal anywhere on exterior I painting. Think, I don't think so either. He makes a note that any work greater than five hundred dollars from the estimate will require a change order. So what he's saying is I'm not gonna just dive into something and hit you with a bigger bill when it's all over. So that yeah. means that since it's a four thousand dollar invoice, Bob, you're going to have to sign off on it too. No problem. Okay. As long as as long as we vote to do it, um, I mean that's part of my job. Yeah. And that's something because it's outside. That's something that he could do like on a Monday or Tuesday or like a Thursday or, or Friday when we're closed. I talked to him about that. He would try to work through the week and possibly some weekends doing the front work when the library is closed doing some of the work around the back because there's some there's some um where the gutter the the gutter on the main part of the library is integrated into the roof it's a copper gutter um and then it comes down through the I don't even know what you call it. It comes down through the roof, through the exterior. And in the back, There's. it looks like there might be a leak. He's going to look into it. Um, there's already, you can see some type of wasp or hornet flying in and out of there. So there's some type of flying something that's built a nest up in there. And it looks like it's going to take at least a little bit of work to clean that up. I don't know if it's punky or not. You won't know until you get up there and start doing the work. But that's all on the back end of the library by the rotunda. And I told him he could go ahead with that while the library was open. Sure. Anything that comes around to the front, he needs to do either when the library is closed or on the weekend when the library is not open. You know, or sorry, he has to do when the library is not open. Anything out front that impacts customers, patrons. Okay. Okay. So, do we, someone uh, please make a motion to um, employ? What's his name? I forgot again. Jordan Bashaw. Bashaw. Okay, Jordan Bashaw to paint the exterior, trim and etc. As he proposed in the four thousand dollar proposal. Is there a motion? I motion that we pay Mr. Bashaw the $4,000 to do the exterior of the library. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, if not, we'll move to a vote. Fred? Yes. George? Yes. Bob? Yes. And I vote yes.
Okay, so we can get started on that, Bob. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, update on holiday season gathering. Nothing's changed since the last update, I assume. We're moving forward. Okay. Um, well, on to one new last thing. Yep. Part of what I'm pushing and part of the reason why I'm pushing hard to get the floor done so then we can get the room painted is to get the library sort of in the best condition, best light possible for Thanksgiving and the holiday party and the Duda room in inside and out. And then also this will hopefully be the last thing, save a little bit of gutter work and the flat roof on the rotunda that needs to be done maintenance wise for a long time. Okay. All right, is there any other old business? Okay, uh, landscaping contract. I put that there because Cindy, you can explain. Andrea's been. Yes, so Andrea has been coming on a semi, um, pretty much monthly basis to do some string trimming and some weed pulling. It's two of her guys for an hour and a half each. So the invoices are totaling out to be $480. So since she's coming on a more regular basis than before when it was just like once in the spring for spring cleanup and once in the fall for fall cleanup, the town is going to request that we have a landscaping contract with her that says, you know, this is what we're this is what we're expecting you to do this and have it be a specific dollar amount. And that's like as much as she would get paid for doing the all of it, the cleanups and the coming and doing the string trimmings and the weed pulling on a monthly basis. Cindy, did you say it's that's four hundred eighty dollars a month? Yes. Which is why I called you and asked you, and that's why I said, well, we're going to have, but this, so if we get a contract, then we can say not more than like $2,000 total for the year. How many, because how many visits a month? Once a month for, with two of her guys for an hour, hour and a half, and they get, she bills for two guys for an hour and a half each. So, so, so there's two of her guys coming for 1.5 hours, but she's billing us for those two, for each one for the 1.5 hours. So Did that's that, is that three right? hours for $480? Plus, yes, to do string trimming and weeding. Does that include materials if she needs, or is that extra? It just says string trimming and weed pulling two guys at 1.5 hours. And it equals out to $480. Okay, but what about the the mulch and, and materials? Is, is are we paying extra? Or that's usually that when from? she would. That would that would be the if um when she comes to do the spring cleanup, then that bill is usually slightly higher at about seven hundred dollars because it's including the mulching and the weed pulling and the trimmings and the two guys at however many hours that takes. I. I, I Four hundred eighty dollars. I just I'm, think. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm. Yeah. I'm just a messenger here. I'm sorry. You no, know, I, I seriously, well, but I think maybe that. I mean, she was coming just in the spring and the fall. Right, and, and then all of a sudden she's been coming every month, which is why I called and asked you. Did you? The highway department mows the lawn. Yes, and they and come like every this, six weeks. They, well, don't they do the the string trimming around? also oh. but maybe it will get better now because one of the guys from the highway department retired and dylan got promoted to his position so dylan's maybe now that they've got new employees on the highway department it might change if we could request that oh, when they come yeah. over and mow can they string trim i don't know um i just think 480 dollars a month for three hours of work is that's that's a lot. I mean, that's one hundred and sixty dollars an hour. Yeah, I, I, agree, I, agree with hour. I think that's. I think that, um, Cindy, you gotta. I don't know. My opinion is we we should stop that um, at this point and uh, this... you know express express to Keith that that it would be nice if they did the string trimming. Who does the string trimming at the town hall? Who does the string trimming at the um? Town offices. 
I would assume it's the highway department. Yes. Uh, yeah. Right. Four four hundred and eighty dollars is that's just there's there's no way for. for well, okay, that's my opinion. I don't. I think that that we should. Uh, you should call her and tell her that we're only interested in spring and fall cleaning, and if it it means that she's no longer interested, there are other people. Well, okay. I'm sorry. I like to stay in Waitley, and Andrew's in Waitley. She's done a great job for us, but yes. I I can't see paying for for pulling a few weeds and for string trimming. I'll do it for four hundred eighty dollars a month. And you can borrow the string trimmer from your brother. I don't need to. I have my own. Oh, even and, better. And it's electric, so it doesn't have gas fumes. But oh, I'm then so you done. can plug just, it into the outlet where the tree is. No, it's 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 battery operated. Four hundred eighty oh. bucks. I just think that's too much, Cindy. I, I, in my opinion, you should call Andrew and say that we only want spring and fall. We can't okay. do this every year. We don't have. Just tell her we don't have it in our budget. I, I so you, think but you guys don't agree. If you guys. Want want I, to continue? I, I agree. Yeah, I, I I agree, but don't forget that's times twelve. If she's doing it every month, come and she wants four hundred eighty dollars. So it's just not each that would pretty time. much that would pretty much be our entire maintenance budget for the fiscal year. Yeah, and, I'm telling you, I'll t I, I will give you guys a break. I'll do it for three hundred a month yeah. for twelve yeah. months. I but, think but we I think can we do that. Well, I don't. I don't think she's mowing the yard. No, trimming and no she she's anything. coming with it. They're coming with a string trimmer and trim around wherever. And two guys, I guess I they come when we're when I'm not there, so I can't say for certain exactly what yeah. they're string trimming or where. Yeah. Just or why just it needs um, to be two guys doing it. Cindy, Cindy, just uh, call her and and just say that we have run out of money in our maintenance budget and we just can only okay. afford the spring and the fall. All right, it's on my list. I'll do that on Monday. Sorry, I just wow. Okay. It's okay. I I was just the messenger, and that's why I called you and asked you if you had any information about it because I didn't know if you had information <laughs> that I didn't. I guess I guess uh, my brain wasn't functional because I, I if if I had heard the four hundred eighty dollars per visit, I I, I yeah. Okay, right. so okay. We'll, you'll take care of that. Um, yeah. funding requests we already, I already did that. Funding. Uh, project priorities, we've been talking about them all night. Timeline for strategic plan completion, we're still working on that and it, it's looking good. Yeah. And um, I think that sort of exhausts our agenda. Go ahead, Bob. I have one more thing that wasn't included. Um, Keith Bardwell grabbed me. Uh, they are moving forward looking at the opener for the basement ADA bathroom. Uh, his indication at this point is they found some ARPA money and they're putting in a bid to have three or four of these different openers installed throughout town buildings. So, okay. Um, okay that sounds good. That's where we are. They're still working on it, getting numbers back from people, but if it happens, it'll be great. It'll be great addition. It's not going to have to come out of our budget. That sounds good. Um, okay. So just before I, we, uh, yeah, I forgot one thing during my director's report. Okay. Carol's off of probation, so I'd like to start paying her the $20.09 that library associates are supposed to make an hour, and I just need the board to say, yes, it's okay, and then I need you, Bob, as chair, to email um, Maureen Nichols and Amy Schrader to let them know that that's okay. Okay. Uh, what Please. do you think, guys? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we do that every time the person goes 90 days, so. Um, and she's okay. doing a really good job. Excellent. And okay, she's so you, very happy with us. You have the board's unanimous consent. Thank you and so will, much, everybody. Yeah, you just send me a reminder tomorrow, bro. No, you're not in tomorrow. I'll um, be there Saturday. I can send you a reminder. Okay, send me Saturday. a reminder, and I, I and I will I will talk to to Amy via email. Okay. okay um, thank o you. October 9th looks like the next second Wednesday. Is that good with everyone? Is there any way we can make the meeting 6.30 instead of 6? Would 6.30 would be easier for everybody? It would be easy. Yeah, it would be easier for me. It'd be I mean, so much be easier for me, with especially with school being started. Again. My biggest issue isn't going to revolve around 6 or 6.30. It's yeah. just I'm going to be coming off the tail end of moving two in-laws. 
two thirds of the way across the country. So I think I'll be here. Okay. Yeah, I'm, we, I'm not available. I'm not available on the ninth. Okay. Well, uh, take a look at your um, calendars. Um, is there a? Do you want to go to the sixteenth, October sixteenth? Is that, that any better? That doesn't not help for me. me. No. I'm available no. the, the 8th or, or the 29th. I'm, I'm gone for October. Okay. But if I'm not wait to the 29th, that's too late. I'm not available on the 8th because every Tuesday I have a cross-country meet except right. next yeah. week. For next week. Okay. Um, is, uh, is Wednesday the 2nd of October too soon? Wednesday, the 23rd of October? That one would work okay for me. Uh, possibly. I could do possibly the 23rd. Does that sound okay for a try? Sure. All right. All right, 1023, and we'll try for yep. 630. Okay. Could, could I bring up one, one other thing? Uh, look, looking ahead here, a couple months, I think that the request for using CPA money comes in what December, and uh, I guess I guess ask Bob Klinger: Are, are we going to propose a project for CPA money that maybe we should talk about something, get in a pipeline, and get an estimate, so we don't we, do? We talked about last ourselves? month. We we talked about last month and the month before. Um, the flat roof in the Duda roof, uh, not Duda, above the rotunda. Oh, okay. um, and we already have sort of a tentative approval from Alan Sanderson that although they wouldn't fund the ceiling for the bricks, they would fund a new roof for the rotunda. So I haven't checked with Bob Smith specifically, but he was going to write that up and submit it for this next go round, which gets approved, what, May of 2025? Right, but the, the request is what, December, sometime they ask submittals yeah. by December. I will, have, I will have it submitted. Okay, okay. just to make sure yeah. that we're in, yeah. in a pipeline to do something before the time runs out, okay. And Bob, you think that Florence roofing bid is still gonna be about where it was? I asked him and he said he'd hold. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. So then it's time for a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Is there a I second? Don't. And I'm sure that all, all are in favor. Good night, everyone. See all you right. on the 23rd of October. Okay.